2024 will usher in the return of many iconic horror franchises like The Omen, Terrifier, A Quiet Place and Alien. But the menu, When Evil Lurks, Men and Talk To Me prove that some of the best horrors in recent memory weren't connected with any established IPs. Anyone who's tired of seeing the same old, same old will be happy to know that the next few months are stacked with original slashers, spooky stories and monster B-movies. I'm Sean Ferry for What Culture Horror and here are the 10 most exciting original horror movies still to come in 2024. Number 10, Long Legs. Nicolas Cage has embraced the horror genre in the last few years, recently appearing in Mandy, Renfield, Color Out of Space, and many others. For this reason, it's fitting to kickstart our list with the latest Nick Cage feature, Long Legs. Set in 1974, the story focuses on new FBI agent Lee Parker, played by Micah Monroe, who's tasked with hunting down a serial killing occultist, played by Nick Cage. Upon investigation, Lee discovers she harbors a personal connection with the maniac. Based on the promotions, the detective thriller has a similar vibe to Zodiac. Zodiac, Seven, and The Silence of the Lambs. As such, it's shaping up to be a pretty messed up flick. However, the most skin-crawling aspect of Long Legs will likely be Cage himself. Though the Con Air star is renowned for his over-the-top performances, this could be his most bonkers character yet, and that's saying a lot. According to test screenings, Cage's behaviour in this film is so creepy it may be off-putting for some. If that's the case, that'll just make horror purists want to see Long Legs even more. Number 9, Infested. Arachnophobia may have come out decades ago, but anyone with a disdain of spiders is still probably not over it. As a result, arachnophobes will be horrified to learn there is a new creepy crawly feature called Infested on the way. Sebastian Vanacek's directorial debut opens with animal-loving loner Caleb buying an exotic spider, and after the eight-legged critter escapes and becomes impregnated, it isn't long before Caleb's whole building is ensnared in a web and swarming with spider babies. Early reviews are promising, with critics applauding Vanacek's focus on building tension slowly, calling Infested and Arachnophobe's worst nightmare. Since the bulk of the story takes place in a single building, the film should have a claustrophobic feel, magnifying the scares. After all, everyone is in danger so long as they remain in that spider-infested complex, and no matter where the characters are or how safe they seem, a lethal arachnid could be lurking out of sight, seconds away from ending their life. With Infested set to hit shudder soon, horror fans will be suitably hyped. On the other hand, spider haters should probably stay away. Number 8, Abigail. In this horror comedy, thugs kidnap the ballet-loving Abigail, the daughter of a nefarious crime lord. After taking her to an empty mansion, the abductors discover the seemingly innocent child is actually an amped-up bloodsucker. And not only do the criminals have to survive the night, they also have to keep Abigail alive to collect the ransom. A nutty premise it might be, but the project looks like it's in safe hands. Based on the positive reception of the Scream Legacy sequels and Ready or Not, it's clear Matt bettinelli Olfen and Tyler Gillet have perfected tongue-in-cheek horror. As a result, these guys seem like the perfect pair to helm a story involving a tutu-wearing vampire pirouetting around in her ballet shoes while gorging on her victim's blood. The film boasts an astounding cast, including Melissa Barrera, Matthew Good, Dan Stevens, Catherine Newton, Giancarlo Esposito, and the late Angus Cloud. To top it all off, Matilda's Alicia Weir will be portraying the titular role. Although the concept is comical, the disturbing images seen in the trailer proves Abigail will be a horror film above all else. Number 7. Never Let Go In Never Let Go, a mother and her sons find themselves tormented by a spirit for years. When one of the children questions the existence of the spirit, the trust in the family begins to collapse and things start to go south pretty quickly. Aside from that very concise summary, the filmmakers behind Never Let Me Go have not released anything in terms of trailers or promotional photos. In fact, full disclosure, that's why you're seeing me right now. We we're just going to do this as a voiceover, but we had nothing to show you. Not only that, there's not even a release date. However, horror fans should be confident because the entire project is being overseen by Alexandra Aja. He may not be a household name, but the French auteur has been one of the most consistent horror directors in recent years. Over the last 20 years, Aja has knocked out films like The Hills Have Eyes, Mirrors, Crawl, High Tension. I won't lie to you, Piranha 3D was uh, not one of his highest points. Throughout his tenure, the French director has shown that he is capable of taking on any horror genre, be it slasher, sci-fi, paranormal or psychological. 
Yeah. Though most details around Never Let Go are shrouded in mystery, things are looking up based on Aja's track record. Number six, Dust Bunny. Dust Bunny follows a young girl who believes a monster lurks under her bed while she sleeps. One day, she asks her mysterious neighbor to kill the monster under the impression it has eaten her entire family. Though Brian Fuller hasn't directed a feature before, he's more than capable of the job. Fuller has decades of writing under his belt, working on huge projects like Heroes, Hannibal, Pushing Daisies, Dead Like Me, Star Trek Voyager, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and helping to create both Star Trek Discovery and American Gods. Also, Hannibal fans will be excited to hear that Mads Mikkelsen has been cast, reuniting the Hannibal writer and lead star for the first time since its abrupt cancellation. David Dastamalchian seems to have caught the horror bug since he's set to star in Dust Bunny as well, after recently featuring in Boogeyman and Late Night with the Devil. If Brian Fuller's directing skills are on par with his writing, Dust Bunny could be a standout in the genre this year. If that's the case, let's hope this creature feature is the beginning of a long and prosperous career for the new filmmaker. Number five, Adrift. Over 20 years after collaborating on Requiem for a Dream, director Darren Aronofsky and star Jared Leto are teaming up once again for the film Adrift. The supernatural story concerns a fisherman that inexplicably encounters an empty yacht. Having read through the logbook, he reckons that the crew came afoul of an evil entity that may still be on board. As it stands, details around the ghost ship flick are very hush-hush, but having said that, everything that we have heard has been pretty promising so far. The story is set to be pretty haunting, as it's being written by the author of The Ring, Koji Suzuki. On top of that, producer Jason Blum has been responsible for producing such ghostly hits as Paranormal Activity, Insidious, and Sinister, so that's a pretty good pedigree to have in your backyard. As well as that, the story is a huge passion project for Jared Leto, who has been pushing for the story's rights for well over a decade. For these reasons combined, I think it's fair to say that there's a lot of talent, care and passion going into the making of Adrift. And since Darren Aronofsky and Jared Leto created real movie magic the last time that they worked together, the stage is set for some bloody good returns in this one. Number four, The Watchers. Following in her father's footsteps, M. Night Shyamalan's daughter Ishana will be helming her first movie this year. Though she's written and directed episodes of Servant, The Watchers will be her directorial filming debut. In this adaptation of A. M. Shine's novel, young artist Mina finds her car breaking down in the forest. While seeking shelter, she stumbles upon a bunker housing three people, and according to them, all cars suddenly break down upon entering the terrain. Stranger still, the trio of strangers claim it's unsafe to leave since the region is swarming with monsters. For her first film, Ishana Shana fittingly borrowed elements from her dad's The Village, since the story involves a mysterious group hiding from unseen creatures in the woods. With the cast including Dakota Fanning, Barbarians Georgina Campbell and the Northman's Alwyn Foray, the performances are expected to be phenomenal. Based on the trailer's gripping atmosphere, enthralling mystery and beautiful cinematography, it looks like the new director shares many of her father's talents. If The Watchers doesn't end with a Shyamalan twist involving aliens or killer flowers, it could be something special. Number 3. Blink Twice Zoe Kravitz has starred in some of the most prominent IPs over the years, including X-Men, Mad Max, and Batman. But in 2024, the young actress will be stepping behind the camera for a change. Blink Twice, which was directed and co-written by Kravitz, follows cocktail waitress Frida, played by Naomi Aki, who's whisked off to a private island by tech billionaire Slater King, played by Channing Tatum. While there, Frida learns a terrible secret that leaves her fearing for her life. For Blink Twice, it looks like Tatum will get the chance to cut loose as a bona fide villain. During an interview with Entertainment Weekly, the 21 Jump Street star said, said his role is darker than he's ever played, and the film will explore uncomfortable themes that are designed to unsettle you. Also, Kravitz fought tooth and nail to keep the film's original title, Pussy Island, stating the name is integral and the seed of the story. Although that naughty moniker was dropped, it implies that the mystery thriller will get pretty carnal and depraved. On top of that, the upcoming flick has a blast from the past cast, including Haley Joel Osment, Kyle MacLachlan, Christian Slater, and Gina Davis, which should be a real treat for any fan of 90s movies. Number two, Arcadian. Since Nick Cage stars in about 42 movies a year, it makes sense that the Oscar-winning star would appear again on this list. 
Arcadian takes place in a post-apocalyptic world, swarming with savage beasts. To survive, Paul and his sons Thomas and Joseph, played by Maxwell Jenkins and Jaden Martell, reside on an isolated farmhouse. When one of his children goes missing, Paul and his remaining son are forced to venture outside to find him. Even though Cage has a devoted fan base, he doesn't have the best track record in horror, thanks to duds like Mom and Dad, Willy's Wonderland, and Prisoners of the Ghostland. But based on all the praise Arcadian received at festivals, things are looking good. Although Cage plays the compassionate protective father to a T, Arcadium never becomes the Nick Cage show, and there are plenty of scenes where Jenkins and Martell get the chance to show their acting chops. Since Arcadium was directed by the visual effects designer of Everything Everywhere All at Once, it's no surprise that the VFX team devised some truly creative and bone-chilling creatures, and with the film soon to be streaming on Shudder, horror fans won't have long to wait to check it out. Number 1. Weapons Ever since Zack Kreger's last flick, Barbarian, scared all of us out of our minds and pretty much ensured that Airbnb will be writing an angry letter of protest, people have been really interested to see what was going to be next up for this actor-turned-filmmaker. Based on the buzz for Kreger's next film, it looks like we're going to have another showstopper. Weapons, which stars Josh Brolin, concerns itself with a group of high schoolers that inexplicably vanish. And a bit like Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia, it's going to focus on several different storylines that will eventually come together. Although horror fans might rightly be nervous of overhyped films, I think there is grounds for excitement here because pretty much every big name in the business was dying to get their hands on this film from the get-go. To highlight that, Pedro Pascal and Rooney Mara were hoping to star at one point. Get Out director and writer Jordan Peele was willing to spend millions out of his own pocket to produce the film as well. Netflix, Sony and Universal all went into a bidding war before they eventually lost out to New Line Cinema. With all that, and Kreger reassembling the same production team that put Barbarian together, it's safe to say I'm excited for this film. What do you think?